Lara Croft is one of the greatest heroines of all time. She is courageous, knows right from wrong. Well, for the most part. And she has the ability to save the world. She doesn't need any superpowers either. All Lara needs are her wits and her dual pistols. Now, every hero of course has an adversary, a villain to overcome. When Lara is looking for an artifact, someone else is too. When Lara is trying to save the world, it's because someone is trying to end it. And when Lara is fighting for her life, it's because someone is... Well, someone is trying to end that too. Lara has taken on numerous villains in the games and I've decided to rank them from worst to best. For this ranking, I'm sticking to the villains of the classic 5 Tomb Raider games plus their expansions. I'll only be ranking the main villains of the game, so no regular enemies or wild animals. I bet you would have loved me to rank each bat individually, but... Ahem. No. This ranking will of course contain spoilers from these games, so consider this your warning. All that's left to say now is that I hope you'll enjoy this ranking of the darkest minds of the Tomb Raider series. Let's go. Coming in last on this list is Verdelet, the main villain of the Tomb Raider Chronicles Ireland section. He's a demon that has possessed Vladimir Kaleta, a Russian soldier who has been dead for 700 years. The thing is, this character is just so stupid and way over the top. Tonally, he just doesn't fit in Tomb Raider and all of his lines come off as goofy B-movie tripe. You'd think that Verdelet was intended to be a scary character and he kind of is if you just look at him, but whenever he opens his mouth you just can't take him seriously. For it was they and their pox-ridden abbot who plotted to incarcerate me in this dungeon hall for an eternity! He's really just a very grumpy dude who has been dead for centuries, but that's all he is. Grumpy. He just doesn't feel like a threat and he's not intimidating at all. I mean, not even Lara nor Father Dunstan seem to be afraid of him. So why stay on the island? Came for a holiday and fell in love with the scenery. Hold your yapping oh. tongue, for want I clip it! That's right, a 14-year-old girl and an old man don't take Verdelet seriously, so why should we? Lara eventually defeats him in a cutscene, which is anticlimactic enough in itself and by simply reading his name out loud. Apparently, that's how you defeat a demon. Verdelet sucks. There's just no way around it. Verdelet! How is this? I move to strike, and it cannot! This will be a very short entry, as next to nothing is known about the mysterious Avalanche organization from Tomb Raider 2's Golden Mask expansion. They feel very similar to the Fiamanera cult from Tomb Raider 2, and for the longest time I thought these guys were the same. They are obviously very evil, as they basically try to eradicate the Inuit tribe that guard the Mask of Tornarsuk in order to claim it for themselves. With a little help from her new friends, Lara is able to take out this organization, and I guess we'll never know more about them. Sergei Mikhailov is the main villain of Tomb Raider Chronicles Russia section. He's a Russian mafia boss and he basically feels like a James Bond villain who somehow ended up in a Tomb Raider game. He's obsessed with getting his hands on the Spear of Destiny and has paid a corrupt Russian admiral to take him to the bottom of the sea to retrieve it. My problem with Sergei is how he's nothing more than a stereotype as opposed to a character with a well-defined personality. He's really just your stock Russian mobster character whose stubborn greed is what causes his demise. A cliché as old as time. Far more interesting is the Admiral Yarefev character. Initially he's the secondary villain of the Russia section, but he ends up as an ally of Lara's. Yarefev helps Lara escape the sinking submarine, which gives him an interesting character arc. This also means that he doesn't really qualify as a villain though, but as a character he's certainly more interesting than Sergei Mikhailov. Puna is the main villain of Tomb Raider 3 South Pacific Island section. He only appears in the boss fight at the very end of it, where he fights Lara from his throne in the heart of the Temple of Puna. 
This guy is really mysterious, as we don't really know anything about him. Unlike other villains in this series, this guy doesn't appear in any cutscenes. Puna is able to conjure lizard monsters from lightning jolts by using the Aura Dagger, a meteorite artifact that itself is in the shape of a lizard. Apparently, Cardassai named Puna after a god who commanded an army of lizard men. The injured Australian soldier that Lara meets earlier in the coastal village believes that the tribesmen of the island sacrifice people to some kind of god in the mountains. I'm pretty sure that this so-called god he's referring to is Puna. Puna, of course, is not a god. He's just another Tomb Raider 3 villain who has figured out what kind of power he can have with a meteorite artifact. The man Lara meets in Madubu Gorge mentions how one ruler was born without a face due to the mysterious power of the artifact. It's very likely that Puna doesn't have a face either since he's wearing a mask. Anyways, no army of lizard men, lightning jolts or bottomless pits were ever going to stop Lara from getting her hands on the aura dagger and ending Puna's reign of terror. Tomb Raider 3 has a quite unusual narrative structure since the story is split into smaller standalone stories that still fit within the larger narrative. Dr. Willard is technically the main villain of the game, but this is revealed in a twist near the end of the game and he's practically absent from the rest of it. Plus, each of the game's sub-stories have their own main villains, which leaves Dr. Willard a bit forgettable. He initially hires Lara to track down the meteorite artifacts around the globe after being impressed with how she dealt with Tony, one of his employees. Besides not giving a shit about the well-being of his employees, who are turning into mutants, he just doesn't really have that sinister edge that I would have liked him to have. Even when he turns on Lara, he comes across as opportunistic more than downright evil. Dr. Willard is just an overly enthusiastic scientist who's perhaps a bit too excited about advancing human evolution. Honestly, the worst thing about him is how he talks with his mouth full of tomato soup. Oh, hi, come in. Make yourself at home. Don't get me wrong, his master plan is evil, but it backfires on him in a really bad way. This is actually the most interesting thing about him, as I don't think he intended to turn himself into a big deformed monster. This shows Dr. Willard as a tragic figure who probably wasn't always a bad guy. I just think he got blinded by his obsession with the meteorite artifacts. It's interesting to experience a different side of the character in The Lost Artifact where Lara gets to explore his castle. Considering the amount of wealth he evidently had, I think it's fair to assume that he was once a very successful and renowned scientist. Dr. Willard just doesn't really bring anything to the table. But he does flip it. In reality, he plays second banana to a Tomb Raider 3 villain that leaves a much bigger impression and is far more evil. Larson is a guy who does what he's paid to do without asking too many questions, and that's because he's a pretty dumb guy. But it's also because he's just a hired gun without any motivations of his own. He's the very definition of a henchman, so... Why am I including him on this list? Well, because technically he's the main villain of the Rome section from Tomb Raider Chronicles alongside Pierre Dupont. It's very likely that they are being paid by someone else in Chronicles, just like in the first game, but we don't know for sure, so I've decided to include them. Also, can you really have a ranking of Tomb Raider villains without this dynamic duo? Larson is unique for a couple of reasons. He's the character that introduces Lara to Jacqueline Natla, who hires her for her first adventure. He's also the only character to appear as a boss three times throughout the series. Ultimately, Larson is a lovable character due to how funny he is, no matter if he's being abused by Lara or berated by Pierre. You were kicked in the head by a horse, we? Oui? So the brain doesn't work correctly? How'd you know about that? <laughs> Pierre Dupont is the closest thing Lara has to a rival in the classic games. In the first Tomb Raider game, he's technically just a really resilient regular enemy who ambushes Lara when you least expect him to, or want him to. Eventually Lara will face Pierre inside the tomb of Tihokan where he can't run anywhere and that ends exactly how you'd expect it to. The interesting thing about Pierre is that he's seemingly just a henchman with even less importance to the plot than Larson, but there's far more to this guy than what meets the eye. 
Whereas Larson is nothing but a gun for hire, Pierre is a talented Tomb Raider equal to Lara Croft. I'm sure this guy has a really good reputation in the underworld for his ability to locate and bring his clients what they pay him to find and we even witness it firsthand in the first game. Not only does Pierre consistently succeed in ambushing Lara and dealing heavy damage to her, he also reaches the tomb of Tihogan before she does. Sure, Lara does all the work and Pierre just reaps the fruits of it, but that's because he's all about working smart, not hard. We get a glimpse into how his mind works in Tomb Raider Chronicles, where he's the main villain of the Rome section alongside Larson. He's obviously the brains in this partnership with Larson, but eventually he's outsmarted by the one person it seems he's never able to defeat. I honestly feel a little sorry for Pierre in this scene, but then I remember what an absolute piece of shit he is in the first game, so fuck him. Tony is a scientist who works for Dr. Willard's RX tech company and even he is a better villain than Dr. Willard. He serves as the main villain of Tomb Raider 3's India section where he's searching for the Enfada Stone in the temple ruins of the jungle. There's a reason why Dr. Willard calls Tony a loon though. This guy is nuts and a mad scientist in every sense of the word. The jungles of India are really creepy and Tony is one of the biggest reasons why. You don't want to be isolated in a spooky dark jungle with a deranged lunatic like him. I was really afraid of him as a kid and I always expected him to ambush me somewhere in the jungles. When Lara first meets him, Tony talks about how his partners Randy and Rory has vanished somewhere in the temple ruins. Lara later finds their horribly mutilated bodies where the Infata Stone used to be and minutes later Lara meets Tony again with the Infata Stone pierced through his chest. It doesn't take an RX Tech scientist to figure out that the Enfata Stone made Tony snap and brutally murder his colleagues. He clearly stabbed himself through the heart with the Enfata Stone in order to give himself supernatural powers, which is a truly frightening thought. Tony eventually meets his demise at the hands of Lara in the Caves of Kalia in one of my favorite boss fights of the games. For such a short period, Tony leaves quite a big impression and he's certainly a memorable villain. Verna van Croy is perhaps the most complicated character in the Tomb Raider series. He's technically the main villain of The Last Revelation, but in reality it's the Egyptian god Set that's pulling his strings. I can't possibly rank Set as a main villain though, since it's more of a concept of chaos and evil than a character. Since van Croy has been possessed by Set, I count van Croy as the main villain. Plus, he is the main villain of the VCI headquarters section of Tomb Raider Chronicles anyways. He also employs an army of desert ninjas who antagonize Lara even before he's been possessed, so it's not like this guy is a saint no matter what. Lara and Van Croy have always had an incredibly complicated relationship that has never seemed to be particularly warm. As a consequence... Freezing, I guess. The old gout playing up again, Verna. It does seem like they have some level of affection for each other though. Von Croy was Lara's mentor when she was young after all, so he can to a certain extent be credited with making Lara who she is today. It seems like their excursion to Cambodia in 1984 permanently damaged their relationship however as Lara was forced to abandon him, leaving him permanently injured. This clearly left him bitter and vengeful towards Lara. He does try to redeem himself once Set has abandoned his body though, where he attempts to save her life at the end of The Last Revelation. Take my hand. I can pull you to safety. Good to see you again. I couldn't leave you! Marco Bartoli is the creepy red-eyed leader of the Fia Manera cult that he inherited from his father Gianni Bartoli. Judging by the evil actions of his followers, there's no question that this guy is a deranged psychopath. While the lack of people in the Venice levels of Tomb Raider 2 obviously is a result of game limitations, it actually adds a quite unsettling vibe to the place. 
It gives off the feeling of people living in fear behind closed doors, afraid of leaving their homes. Just look at these guys. They parade around the streets of Venice with baseball bats, firearms and Dobermen trained to kill humans. The Fiamanera are not your regular hoodlums. They basically attempt to commit genocide against the monks at the Bakang Monastery. It's really interesting to look into the history of this cult. They have always been obsessed with finding the Dagger of Xi'an, all the way back to when Gianni was the leader. Even back then, the cult were in conflict with the Bakang monks, who prevented the Fiamanera from reaching the Talion by sinking the Maria Doria. Judging by Lara's first interaction with a member of the cult, it's obvious that these guys are brainwashed and live in fear of Marco, preferring suicide over delivering an unwanted message to him. Marco essentially just wants to live out his boyhood dream of becoming a dragon, which says something about his ego. The ritual in which Marco commits suicide with the Dagger of Xi'an is actually quite disturbing and excellently exemplifies what he's willing to do to get what he wants. His transformation into the dragon must be regarded as one of the most iconic moments in Tomb Raider history. Considering the fact that Sophia Lay only is a secondary villain of Tomb Raider 3, it really says something about how good a villain she is since I've decided to rank her in second place. She is the main villain of Tomb Raider 3's The Lost Artifact expansion, but in the main game she's only the main villain of the London section. Sophia only appears in one cutscene before Lara has her epic fight against her, but it feels like we know a lot more about her thanks to the excellent buildup of her character throughout the section's cutscenes. During Lara's confrontation with one of her mercenaries in Thames Wharf, it's implied that Sophia is a very old woman, despite looking about Lara's age. This of course doesn't add up, but the mystery is somewhat demystified when Lara meets the leader of the damned in the sewers beneath London. He leads a gang of disfigured victims of cosmetic experiments done by Sophia's company. Sophia has figured out how to make herself immortal with the help of the Eye of Isis artifact, but the road to give her eternal youth has had a very high price for several people, and she just doesn't care. The only thing she cares about is what she sees in the mirror. When Lara meets her, she just exudes a smarmy and evil energy, and she's easily one of the least likable villains in the games. Some villains think they are doing the right thing, but Sophia is just a ruthless narcissist, which makes her really scary. The boss fight against her is one of the best in the series as well, as Lara is powerless against her but able to defeat her by tricking her. This is truly one of the most satisfying moments of the series. There is no question about it. Jacqueline Nadler is the ultimate Tomb Raider villain. Not only is she the first main villain of the series, but she's also the only villain to carry over into the games made by Crystal Dynamics. Natla is not just a very interesting character with the most fleshed out background of any Tomb Raider villain, she's also really, really evil. At first glance, she is an American businesswoman who is the CEO of Natla Technologies. She hires Lara to track down a part of the so-called Atlantean Skian in Peru, but eventually double-crosses her because she probably knows that Lara would object to her evil plans. You see, Natla is actually an Atlantean. In fact, thousands of years ago, she used to rule Atlantis alongside Qualopic and Tihokan. It's evident, though, that Natla was a megalomaniac who was always at odds end with her fellow rulers. Natla wanted to improve the Atlantean race by using the Skian to invoke rapid evolutionary changes to them, thereby creating a superior race. Qualopeg and Tihogan realized how crazy and dangerous she was and imprisoned her in a frozen stone capsule underground. This turned out to be a mistake. Qualopeg and Tihogan eventually died off naturally in different parts of the world while Natla was only dormant, waiting. A nuclear test explosion near her prison in 1945 released her and set free one of the most evil minds in history. Natla then spent the next 50 years tracking down the locations of not only her own ski and piece but Qualopax and Tihokan's pieces as well. Thanks to the inadvertent help of Lara, who Natla robs of the ski and pieces, she's almost able to create her army of mutants with which she can rule the world. But Lara of course puts a stop to that. Double-crossing Lara was obviously the worst thing Natla could have done, as Lara kills everyone Natla sends to kill her. Larson, Pierre, the cowboy, the skater boy, and the bald man. 
and eventually Natla herself. In my opinion, Jacqueline Natla is the greatest villain of the Tomb Raider series, and I would also argue that she is the nemesis of Lara Croft. That's how I rank the villains of the classic Tomb Raider games, but how would you rank them? Let me know what you think down in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching and commenting. Take care.